In the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful, may the peace and blessings of Allah be exalted be upon the Prophet Muhammad and his purified progeny. And may the damnation of Allah be upon their enemies. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the 14th episode. In the last episode, we spoke about the ghulat and how they are worse than the nawasib, and this is because they wage a theological war against the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we said that Shias, they should not be fooled by this type of illusion that the Ghulat give, that they are Shia or that they are among the Shia. Because we said just like a Nasabi can read the Quran in a beautiful way, one who is a Shi'i would not usually get fooled by this. And in the same way, just when they see the Ghulat visiting the shrines of the Imams alayhi salam, they should not be fooled by this internal enemy. And we mentioned a very important narration of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam where he warns the Shia that do not let your youth become corrupted by these ghulat. And the Imam says that they are the worst of Allah's uh, creation and that the one who is muqassir, so the one who um, does not recognize the true status of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and puts down their status, uh, there is a possibility for him being guided, whereas for the ghulat, this is a lot harder because they have left even the obligatory duties such as the salah, the fasting, the zakah, the um, hajj, etc. So we showed this narration and we showed the words of Sayyid Ja'far Shirazi where he mentions this point that many people do not pay attention to. So in this episode, I want to highlight a couple of narrations which state how our behavior and conduct should be towards the ghulat. And just to mention in the last narration, it doesn't necessarily mean that someone who is a ghali cannot be guided. There are people, as I've mentioned before, who were on ghulu but then came back to Shia Islam and the Tawheed of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. But because they have left these obligatory actions, it puts them even further away from being guided. Whereas let's say someone is muqassir, he can also be guided when he realizes the true ma'rifah. And then we have those muqassirin who will stay stubborn on that type of taqsir that they do, the taqsir of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, putting down the status, and then they will end up with, let's say, the ghulat and the nawasib in Jahannam. But usually some people who do not have enough knowledge may not really understand the true status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, but they still perform the obligatory actions and when guided by someone or given the correct knowledge, they can get rid of this taqsir that they have putting down the status of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. So, as I said, there are many double standards where some, they take the matter of the ghulat lightly and this is why this disease has spread among Shia circles because of this leniency by some who claim to be Shia. And I said that if you are cursing muqassirin or people who you think are muqassiras but you are not saying anything about the ghulat, then you have a real problem within yourself and your beliefs. Because I mentioned the following point that you as a Shia or someone who aspires to be from the Shia of Imam Ali alayhi salam, if someone was a known nasabi, an enemy of the Shia, would you go and sit with him casually get a meal, crack jokes, and invite him to your house. You would say, of course not, this person is a Nasabi. He is an enemy of Allah, he is an enemy of the Shia. These are the types of people like ISIS, these terrorists who killed the Shia and who killed innocent people. So you would say, I will not go with such a person and chill out with them. But when it comes to Ghulat, unfortunately I've seen this type of thinking from brothers, where some brothers will admit that, okay, yeah, I'm just going for the matam, the chest beating where the eulogies are recited for Imam Hussain alayhi I'm just going to this matam and I don't follow what they follow. But the problem here is that you are strengthening the gathering of the khulat. You are strengthening their gathering and you are making their movement more legitimate and bigger. For example, there's one group in Germany who are khulat, they are Indian type of khulat. And openly in their gathering, shirk and kufr is said. They do not um, condemn this and they say shirk and uh, kufr themselves. But we see that some people who participate in some of their gatherings, they just go for the azadari rituals and they are not actually ghulat themselves. They are not 
Rollat, but because they are attending these gatherings, they are strengthening this type of movement. And this would be haram, because we even have a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad وآله, that whoever comes to an innovator and glorifies him, dignifies him, then he has took part in the destruction. Hadmul Islam. Yes'a fi Hadmul Islam. So if you come and someone is an innovator, for example, and you big them up towards people, you glorify them, and you make people follow such a person, then this will be, of course, on your neck, if the person is known as an innovator. So what about those people who are ghulat, that you go to their gatherings? You may not share their beliefs, this is known, you may not share their beliefs, but you are going to their gatherings because you want to, let's just say, do matam. This would be haram and this would not be permissible because you are making them spread wider, whether it be in other communities, in other countries, or on their social media. So some brothers have said to me that, okay, I only go for the matam, I don't actually agree with these people. It's different if you yourself were in a gathering and they came to it, but if you specifically go to a known Ghulat's group gathering, then you are assisting them in this matter, whether you know this or do not know this. Let us read a narration from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, and it was mentioned about the companions, the followers of Abu al-Khattab, uh, may Allah curse him. And this person was a known exaggerator and Ghali who himself claimed to be a prophet and he ascribed divinity to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. So one of the notable names of the exaggerators is this particular individual, Abu al-Khattab, who the Imams have cursed. And he also promoted the deviant belief of Hulul incarnation, where the Ghulat and exaggerators believe that God physically came in one of the bodies of the Imams alayhi salam. And of course, we showed in previous episodes where the Imams refuted such a belief and how such a belief contradicts the pure monotheistic beliefs that were taught by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam because then it limits Allah Azza wa Jal in a form and anything that is in a form or limited is something in need. For example, human beings, we have our bodies in different parts because we are in need of these bodies and we are limited in our power and capabilities. So Abu al-Khattab, apart from claiming to be a prophet himself and starting a sect called the Khattabiya, the um, sect which was attributed to him, also promoted this belief of Hulul. So let us read the following narration in Rijal al-Kashi and how we can apply the words of the Imams in our conduct towards those who are known Ghulat. And of course, yes, it would be different if someone you are not clear on his beliefs. But if someone is very clear on their beliefs or you've seen them utter kufr or types of shirk and subscribe to these ghali beliefs, then one should take the approach which the Imam is saying. So we find in the following narration that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam mentioned Abu al-Khattab and the Ghulat. And he mentioned the followers or companions of Abu al-Khattab and said the following. فَقَالَ لِي يَا مُفَضَّلْ لَا تُقَاعِدُوهُمْ وَلَا تُآكِلُوهُمْ وَلَا تُشَارِبُوهُمْ وَلَا تُوَارِثُوهُمْ the Imam says, O oh, Mufaddal, neither sit with them, nor eat with them, nor drink with them, nor shake hands with them, and nor give them inheritance. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam is mentioning an important point here, which we can apply in our conduct towards the ghulat. The Imam is saying, do not sit with them. So do not go in their gatherings, sit with them, and strengthen their gatherings. If the Imam is saying that do not even sit with the ghulat, then how is it allowed for anyone who claims to be a follower of the Imam to go in their gatherings and go do matam and strengthen their gatherings? This would not be allowed according to the words of the Imam if you cannot even sit with them. Nor eat with them. So do not lay out a sofra and start eating with the ghulat and having a good time with them and having a laugh to show them that you are completely disassociating from their kufr type of ideology. And of course, if you go and sit and eat with them and act fine, they may think that you are tacitly approving their aqaid. This would be different if you sit with them for the purpose of debating. This would be an exception. But we are talking about, in general, how one displays conduct towards the ghulat, to show the ghulat that they are aloof from them, they are free of them. O oh, Mufaddal, neither sit with them, nor eat with them, nor drink with them, 
nor shake their hands, nor give them inheritance. So here as well we know if the ghalat, if one shook their hands, then such people are najis anyway and many would consider them as ritually impure. And they do not also have the right of inheritance. And we will show later on where scholars say one cannot marry them because they do not have the hukum of Islam. They do not have the ruling of Islam upon them, unlike other sects where they say the shahada, we consider them as Muslims in this world. So the Imam is clearly saying here that do not sit with them, do not eat with them and do not mix in their gatherings. Yet some from our Shia community, due to their leniency for the ghulah, do mix with them and strengthen their gatherings. And for this reason, ghulu and their type of disease and deviant ideas have spread where some unfortunately have been attracted to this movement and then have started to say Nusayri types of beliefs or ghulu type of beliefs. And as we mentioned before, the ghulat are not all identical in their beliefs. There were various movements of the ghulat within history, but all of them share one thing in common, which is committing polytheism and raising the Imams alayhim salam to a status which they completely condemned and to a status of divine lordship. So these words of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam should be enough for anyone to disassociate themselves from the ghulat and not mix in their gatherings, lest they strengthen this gathering and the ideas of the ghulat will reach more people. Whereas if the ghulat saw that no one go to their gatherings who are non ghali and the ghulat saw that if they came to Shia gatherings that they would be kicked out, they would be more secretive with their beliefs. And we do find that some of them conceal some of their beliefs, they're not straight up. But from how they act and talk and from the things that they tacitly approve, we can tell that they are the ghulat that the Imams cursed. The second narration I want to quote for this episode is from Abu Hashim who asks Imam Rida alayhi salam in regard to the ghulat. And let us see again how Imam Rida alayhi salam answers or how one of the Imams alayhi salam answered. The first narration I quoted from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam showed us how our conduct should be towards the ghulat. And then we find that Imam Rida alayhi salam was asked about the ghulat and the mufawwidah. So those who believed basically that Allah azza wa jal, he created the Imams and then delegated all of the sustenance creating, all, all of this was basically done by them. All the running of the world was done by the Imams and Allah azza wa jal just sat back after creating them. So these two groups, the Mufawwida, who would be a type of ghulat, Imam Rida alayhi salam was asked about them. And he said that the ghulat are infidels and the Mufawwida are mushrikeen. So they are polytheists, they commit shirk by saying that Allah Azza wa Jal just created the Imams and then delegated all affairs of the world and universe just to the Imams and that Allah Azza wa Jal sat back. Imam Rida alayhi salam said the ghulat are infidels and the mufawwidah are polytheists. So they are mushrikeen. They would be counted as the polytheists and they are also from the ghulat of course. They are one of the groups of extremists or exaggerators. The ghulat are infidels and the Mufawwida are polytheists. And of course, later on in episodes, we will clarify on this point of what tafweed is, that Allah Azza wa Jal created the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and then sat back and delegated every task from the world and all the tasks of the world to them. Anyone who interacts with them, accompanies them, has food or drink with them, so similar to what Imam Sadiq alayhi salam was saying, marries them, trusts them, confirms their speech or helps them even by saying a single word will go out of the guardianship of Allah Azza wa Jal and his messenger Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad and the Ahl al-Bayt. So it's important for us to analyze these words of Imam Rida alayhi salam. He said the same as Imam Sadiq alayhi salam when it comes to mixing with them, eating and drinking and then he says about marrying them because marrying the ghulat mufawwidah, it wouldn't be something allowed. Um, someone should not help them by even a single word according to this tradition. And if you do, you'll be out of the guardianship of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Messenger and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So this particular point is for us to focus on that helping them, assisting the ghulat in any type of way takes you out of the guardianship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is very dangerous because someone could share videos 
and I've seen this before from some brothers who have shared videos or they have shared pictures of gatherings of these Hulat. There was one brother who did so, he didn't know about this group that they were deviant or not, he just shared a video of them doing Matam. But sharing these posts can make you confirm the words of the Hulat or help them. So even helping the Hulat by a single word can take you out the guardianship of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is very dangerous and something for all of us to take heed of. That there may be some brothers on Facebook, Twitter or social media, they share videos of these Ukhulat, their gatherings, because they just see them doing matam, mentioning the, the name of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Sayyidah Zainab salam alayhi alayha, when the Imams and all of these great personalities are free of such mushrikeen. So one should be cautious in such a matter because I've seen it before where some brothers unintentionally they didn't know for example one of these groups was a exaggerated group they shared a video of them just of the matam and when I warned the brother they took heed alhamdulillah after that but there are others who share posts of these people they share pictures videos of their gatherings or posters of where their gatherings will be such actions can take you out of the guardianship of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi and all of us are in need of their intercession. So according to Imam Rida alayhi salam's words, we should not help them even in a single word, with a single word, nor confirm their speech. And this goes to all of the people that they should be careful on who they invite to their gatherings. There are some that invite these speakers unknowingly and then strengthen them and promote them after that. If we want for us as a Shia community to be rid of these people, then we must take a very harsh stance and also do a type of takfir. Our stance should be harsh on these people so that they will not have the audacity to show up to our gatherings. And this is a way that we can do it according to Imam Rada alayhi salam. Again, anyone who interacts with them and accompanies them and has food or drink with them, marries them, trusts them, confirms their speech or helps them by even saying a single word will go out of the guardianship of Allah Azza wa Jal. So inshallah ta'ala, this is something for all, of, for all of us to take heed of. And we conclude in this episode saying that the imams clearly showed us that interaction with these people should not be where one is being lenient towards them, eating, drinking with them, having food, because the ghulat have an extreme type of ideology. And their extreme ideology can spread to other people and deviate them theologically. Yes, if we invited the ghulat, to have a debate with them to expose their deviant theological ideas, this would be permissible. But to casually chill out with them is completely haram and to strengthen their gatherings. And if one would not do this with a Nasabi, then why would they do so with someone who is from the Ghulat, who are worse than the Nawasib and worse than the Muqassirin? Yet many of these people who curse Muqassirin but they don't say a word about exaggerators, this is because they themselves are from the Ghulat or they have exaggerated type of ideas, so you'll never see them condemning the ghulat. Let's just curse the muqassir as nawasib. But we will go and do matam, sit with the ghulat, and promote their speakers and reciters. So inshallah ta'ala, dear brothers and sisters, in the next episode, what we will do is that we will speak about the views of the Shia scholars on the ghulat, and we will show some of those who are eulogy reciters that unfortunately say the worst types of shirk and kufr and ghulu and how we should deal with this in the Shia community and what our stance is. So please join me for the next episode. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wa ala